The world of gaming is more immersive, intense, and impressive than ever. Journey to embark on, enemies to fight, universes to explore. But there's one game in particular that has players all over the world obsessed. This is Leaf Blower Revolution. What started out as a nice relaxing distraction has now been updated over and over to become an engrossing experience, with a myriad different types of leaves to blow off the screen, pets to collect, and even bosses to defeat. All in the name of, well, making the numbers go higher. It might sound daft, but trust me, play it, it's free, and you'll see why it's so addictive. In the first competition to see who could collect the most stuff in the game, I did pretty well. I was 7th at one point, but sort of gave up towards the end. You're just going to have to take my word on that. Anyway, what do I owe my limited success to? Well, actually, it's a bit of maths that's also really important in science. Logarithms. You see, one important thing you have to collect in the game are these red or BLC coins. The best way of doing that, though, is to collect orbs. Every orb you collect automatically gives you 5% extra BLC coins. In other words, your number of coins gets multiplied by 1.05. So if I have 1,000 coins, grabbing an orb means I'll now have 1,050. It doesn't sound like much, but if you collect two orbs, you get 5% and 5% on top of that again. That's the same as 1,000 times 1.05 times 1.05, or 1,000 times 1.05 squared, which is 1,103. If I get 10 orbs, that's 1,000 times 1.05 to the power of 10, which is 1,623 coins, and things start to snowball. It's like compound interest when your money's in the bank. But because we all have to sleep, I needed to know how many orbs my little auto blowers would have to collect in order to get 10 times as many coins, 10,000. So here's what the equation would look like for this. 10,000 is equal to 1,000 times 1 1.05 to the power of n, where n is the number of orbs I need to collect. The way we find that out is with logs or logarithms. And that's what logs do. They tell you what power you need on a number or what power we raise a number by, we say, to get another number. The actual calculation is very complicated, but thankfully we have calculators to do that for us. So we know that 10 squared is 100, 10 cubed is 1000, but we can look at it the other way around. The log of 100 is 2, the log of 1000 is 3, and so on. At least that's when we're using the normal log to the base 10. There's another base that we use as well, I'll talk about that later. So how can I use logs to find this unknown power that I need? The first thing I need to do is just get the 1.05 to the power of n on its own. Taking the 1000 over the other side, 10,000 divided by 1000 equals 10. That makes sense, I know I want 10 times more coins. Then we log both sides. All you have to do is write log in front of your numbers, ideally with brackets. So log of 10 is equal to log of 1.05 to the power of n. This is where it gets clever. If you have a power in your log, you can take the power out and stick it in front of the log. So log of 10 is equal to n times the log of 1.05. A general way of saying that is log of a to the power of b is the same as b times the log of a. That's what we call the first log identity. There are a few of these, but this is the only one we need right now. Finishing off rearranging this, we find that n is equal to the log of 10 divided by the log of 1.05, which gives me 47.2. So that means 1.05 to the power of 47.2 is equal to 10. What does that mean? I'd need 47.2 orbs to get 10 times more coins. Well, in reality, I'd need 48 at least, wouldn't I? What's weird is that what we've done here would work if we used the log of any base. The main other one being the natural log. That's ln on your calculator. If you see LOG, it usually means base 10, whereas natural log, some people call it LUN, is based on a special number E, Euler's number, which actually we find the universe kind of runs on. Just be careful, you might be tempted to think that the log of 10 divided by the log of 1.05 is the same as the log of 10 divided by 1.05, but that isn't the case. So there we go, that's how logs helped me become a somewhat speed leaf blower. But there are far more important applications of logs in the world. In physics, we use them to calculate how radioactive something is. And we also use them when working with capacitors, the little things that store, charge, and energy inside pretty much anything that runs on electricity. Having said that, I think I'm going to hang up my leaf blower for now, as it's taken up far too much of my time lately. But I hope that, armed with my log strat, you can go on to blow away leaves like a pro too.